Hi, my name's Starsky and welcome to From the Studio on Clubbing TV. In this episode, I'm going to take a look at a really beautiful bit of kit. It's the Osmos from Expressive E. This thing looks absolutely stunning. It looks to me like it's been designed by someone who designs minimalist houses or really expensive furniture. It's got these unique keys that look almost like they're floating on top of the base, not sitting under a knob lathe and control panel like almost every other keyboard you've ever seen. It's sleek and it's sexy and it's very, very clever. It's an NPE keyboard, that's MIDI polyphonic expression. So it's different to a standard keyboard that just sends MIDI notes, it sends velocity and after touch maybe, this will send a whole load of information. Each key gets its own MIDI channel and it'll send pitch bend, for example, a key. So if I play two notes, I'm bending this one, but I'm not bending that one. And you just can't do this on a normal keyboard. You have to use the pitch bend, which will bend all the notes. And you can hear this is doing strange things, this, uh, this sound. If I push it, I'm getting three tones or three notes out of the one key. And that's because of the way this works. We've got X, Y, and Z axes on it, and I won't go into too much detail on that, but I think that's X, that's the pressure. So you can do things with that, and as you press it a bit further, I think that's the Y direction. So you can modulate all sorts of things with that. And then we've got this Z direction, which is the pitch bend. Which just means we've got all sorts of expression that we can do that you can't do on a normal keyboard. Let's find another tone. We flick through using this knob here or these two buttons there. That's just hundreds of these things. All do various things. Some of them good. No, don't say that. So let's find another tone. We can flick through using these preset buttons here or using this knob. So I did have one earlier on that I quite liked. Yeah, I just wanted to show that one really because it's so interesting. So we've got a sort of fluty sound in there with that noise. Plus like a pipe being hit. And then that weird little LFO. That speeds up as you push it down harder into that Y axis. So trying to do something like this on a standard keyboard. Well, it's not possible, but if you were going to try and recreate this sort of modulation, it would take you a while to set it up. And this is why these things are so popular, because they save time when you're doing music productions for, say, film, TV or video games. 
you can easily start to make things sound really expressive. just something you can't understand the keyboard and this is a really interesting tone because it sounds a little bit like a sort of atmospheric piano or a bell and that's the same tone that's doing this <laughs> fabulous isn't it and you find that with loads of the onboard sounds here you can play them in so many different ways but let's take a look at the interface and how you use it It's a really simple interface this, we've just got these four buttons across the top and these six knobs around the screen. It's a really nice high def screen actually. Um, and that's all we've got here. Most of the editing, if you want to do any editing, is via the app. I'll show that in a minute, but we've got presets so we can flick through the presets we've just seen there with this knob here, or we can go into the various characteristics of the sounds and then flick through with this, click OK, or just flick through, oh, there's only one of them. <laughs> Okay, flick through the pianos, there's only one of them. <laughs> yeah, tell you what, let's go to all and then let's go to Bode and take a look. What have we got there, you see? So there we go, we can flick through them with that or with this. Nice. Oh, very orchestral that, isn't it? But I am looking at bowed strings. Let's look at something else. And um, bass. Let's go to all basses, shall we? Acid bass. Let's see what that sounds like. That's a sort of acid bass, isn't it? Um, but to edit the sound then, we go into the synth parameters and we've only got access to six different macros. So here, whoever's programmed this sound has given us access to cutoff, resonance, envelope, waveform, uh, drive, and delay. And that's all we can access from the synth itself. So we've also got effects, reverb, mod delay, strep deck, analog echo. And then we've got an EQ in there as well. And then we go to the next one. And this is all the sensitivity settings. So at the minute it's Bending oh, wow. is one semitone, but we can go all the way up to 96. <laughs> and then change all the settings in there. So if we put it on back onto one semitone, go down to a quarter of a semitone so it's not too sensitive. Nice, isn't it? That? And you can change the sensitivity to medium, high and low. Then we've got this playing function as well. And we can play different arpeggiators, for example. And there's various things in this. But that's the interface. That's how simple it is to use on the face of it. But then there's the editor to go in and edit the sounds. And that's what we'll look at next. If you're brave enough to attempt to program this yourself, and I really do mean brave enough, because it's not a simple thing at all, even if you want to just edit the presets, you're going to have to learn how to use this Hacken Editor, which is available for Mac and PC. And at first glance, it looks absolutely insane. And that's because, in many ways, it is. It's essentially a matrix like this one here from the Analog Solutions Colossus, but instead of using pins to connect the inputs and outputs, each of these connections in the editor is combined with the way you play the keys, plus LFOs and envelopes and stuff. But basically it's a matrix. You've got the inputs on the vertical axis and the outputs on the horizontal axis. And if that sounds complex, it's because it is. The basics are quite easy to get hold of, but once you start looking, for example, at some of the more complex presets, you can just see how complex these things get. 
So it's really quite difficult to get expert at this. You can sort of understand what's happening, but you really do need to concentrate because some of these ones are just pure hieroglyphics. Look at that. <laughs> that looks mad, doesn't it? Yeah, gritty saw. Looks like an awful lot going on in there for that sound. So you'd really have to be into your sound design to get to grips with that. I spent a few days playing with it and I still wouldn't say I was anywhere near competent at it. I can find my way around it. I can understand what's going on here and there, but it is a bit of a headache to be honest. And I can see most people using this as a preset machine uh, or really just to control other stuff in the studio, which is what I'm thinking of doing with it. I've got loads of other synths that are MPE uh, capable, but the keyboards aren't MPE. So this is where this is going to get used for me anyway. So what are my final thoughts? Well, at around 1800 euros, this isn't cheap and it's not going to be on a lot of people's radar, to be honest. Not unless you make music for films, TV and video games or something like that, because you can do really atmospheric stuff with this without even trying. Just... <laughs> Not bad for just sticking with two hands on the keyboard. Really atmospheric and nice, but I wouldn't recommend it for club tracks. I did try and do something a bit more clubby, like I normally do for these episodes with it, but um, it, it just didn't lend itself to me. I'd have to spend a little bit more time digging into the sounds and, and getting more used to that editor. It's just not as simple as most synths because there's a lot more going on and it makes sounds in a completely different way. But I can definitely see it. I mean, I'm going to use it as a controller and I can definitely see other people are using it as a controller. And when you're using sounds that you've never used before and you start hitting these keys and doing different things with them, it does spark off different bits of your imagination. And it also means that you can modulate stuff. If you did use this live somewhere, you can modulate a lot of stuff with a single key press. So, um, but yeah, I, I don't think I'd recommend it for club stuff. But if you're making um, stuff for film and TV, uh, absolutely 100% go and check it out. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, don't forget you can catch it whenever you like on our Club in TV official YouTube channel on the From the Studio playlist. And if you've got any questions, drop me in the comments and I will see what I can do to answer them. And if you are into your synths, your drum machines and your music tech, do take a look at my Starsky Car YouTube channel as well. I've got a much deeper dive into this where I discuss everything about it in a lot more detail, which may be of interest. Anyway, I'll see you in the next episode of From the Studio.